Hello, and welcome to the Introduction to Proofs video on Even and Odd Numbers. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to give a precise definition of even integers and odd integers. You should also be able to prove a simple fact about even and odd integers using a definition unwinding proof. And we'll, we'll explain what that means in this video. Let's start off with our definition of what an even integer is. This is the definition that we'll come back to and use for the rest of the course. And whenever we say even numbers, we're going to mean this. An even integer a, sorry, an integer a is even if there is an integer, another integer n, such that a is equal to two times that integer n. Or put it um, a bit softer, uh, if a is two times something, where something is an integer. That's how you recognize even integers. Let's look at some examples of using this definition. 14 is even because 14 is two times something and that something is seven and seven is an integer. Minus 10 is even because minus 10 is two times minus five and minus five is an integer. Finally, one that's um, rather confusing for people uh, is that zero is even by this definition. Why is that? Can we write zero as two times something? Yes, it's two times zero. Is zero an integer? Yeah, it is. So there we go. Even though it's a little bit um, maybe frustrating or upsetting, it is true that zero is an even number. Now, all of these are, are sort of small examples. Um, and I want to show off a slightly bigger example that uh, shows off how this definition is useful um, even when we can't necessarily find this n. So let's look at the following picture. So here's a picture of a bunch of rowers on a boat. We've got a person at the front and a person at the back. And we've got pairs of uh, rowers here. There's one on each side of the boat. Now, there are an even number of rowers here, and we can figure that out without actually counting them. So our goal is to show that the total number of rowers is two times something. And we can see that all of all of them come in pairs, so we don't actually need to count how many there, how many pairs there are. We know that it's two times something. They're all coming in twos. So this is actually enough to give us that um, there's an even number of rowers in the picture. Now let's look at odd numbers. So an integer is odd if there's another integer m such that the first one is two times the second one plus one. So let's look at some examples of this. Seven is odd because seven is two times three plus one, and three is an integer. Minus one is odd because minus one is two times minus one plus one, and one minus one is an integer. So the even ones are ones that you can write as two times something, and the odd ones are two times something plus one. These are the definitions of even and odd that we will use through this course. Let's do a concept check. Is the number 98,765 an odd number? And why? One common answer that uh, students give in this course is yes. And they say, uh, uh, they don't say this though. So th this is this is the reason why it's true. It's true because it's two times 4,932. 4,932 is an integer. Um, so it's two times that plus one. That's our definition of what it means to be an odd number. Now, this is not the answer that someone in say grade three would give. So what would what would someone in grade three give? they would say something like, well, that big number ends in a five, which means it is odd. Now, what's wrong with this argument? And by wrong, I mean, why didn't we use that argument? Well, this is not the definition of an odd integer that we are using. So we agreed that an odd integer is two times an integer plus one. And what this argument is using is that an integer is odd if and only if its final digit is one, three, five, seven, or nine. 
Now this is true, but this is a more sophisticated fact. And for now, at the beginning of this course, we're going to stick to simple definitions and simple facts as much as possible, and we'll only use theorems if we have a proof for them. We will see a proof for this theorem later on in the course. For now, always go back to the definitions that we've agreed on. Let's look at a type of proof technique we're going to use for a large majority of this course. It's called definition unwinding. So our theorem is if a is an even integer and b is an odd number, then a plus b is odd. So how do we prove this? Well, we have certain assumptions. The assumptions that we're going to start with are a is even and b is odd. And the conclusion we want is a plus b is odd. So in our proof, we're going to start with our assumptions. We start by writing down our assumptions. a is an even number, b is an odd number. The next thing we're going to do is write down our conclusion. Our conclusion will go at the end of the proof, naturally. Our goal is to fill in the blanks here where every step is justified and no steps, uh, even the most skeptical person, wouldn't um, uh, challenge any step we made. So let's work through this. If our final line of our proof is a plus b is an odd number, what would our previous line have to be? How can you conclude that something is odd? Well, the definition of an odd number for us is that a plus b is 2 times something plus 1. So whatever the, the uh, proof is in here, the line right before this should say a plus b is 2 times something, and that something is an integer. Therefore, a plus b is an odd number by the definition of odd number, right? If we fill in this with something appropriate, uh, then from here to here, uh, everyone will agree because that's the definition. So now our goal is to find that something. And it's not clear yet how we actually find that something. So we've unwound our definitions from the bottom. We're basically as far as we can go. So now we go to the top and unwind our definitions from the top. What does it mean for a number to be even? Well, a number is even if there is an integer n such that a is 2 times n. What does it mean to be odd? It means that there's an integer m such that b is equal to 2 times m plus 1. Now, our goal is to find what this something should be, and we care about a plus b, so now we're in a position to actually add these two things together. Let's do that, and we'll see that that uh, completes the gap. So a plus b is 2n plus 2m plus 1. We added them up together. So now what should this something be? Well, the something is n plus m. And n plus m is an integer since both n and m are integers. And that's it. That completes our proof. Now, notice that if you were to write down this proof um, just as is uh, and give it to someone, they would be able to read it from start to finish and every line would be justified. This would follow from this. This would You'd be allowed to write down this because that's the assumption. And every line would follow from, from the previous one. We've also said that um, by using connective words like by the definition. Notice this, so, so, and this tells us, this tells the reader why we're writing down these things, what they come from. So even though this isn't how we wrote down the proof, we wrote it down by writing this line, then this line, then bouncing in for forwards and backwards, this still reads um, from the first line to the last line. All right, let's look at some exercises. So your, one of your exercises is to prove by using this definition unwinding technique that the sum of any two odd numbers is even, the product of any two odd numbers is odd, and that if you add an integer to itself, the result is even. Your second exercise is what other facts about even numbers, odd numbers, addition, and multiplication do you know? Write down all of the facts you know and prove them using definition unwinding. 
Let's look at some concept checks. So these are things that students often get wrong. I see mistakes on tests like this. So what's wrong with this argument? 3 is an even number because 3 is equal to 2 times 1.5. Well, the error here is that even though 3 is 2 times something, you need that something to be an integer, and 1.5 is not an integer. Let's look at a second concept check. What is missing in this proof? So this is a proof that students often give. If a is even, then a squared is even. That's our theorem. And a proof that they'll write down is, note that a squared is 2n squared, which is 4 times n squared, which is 2 times 2n squared. What's missing? Well, the thing that's missing for me is, I don't know what this n is. Um, I don't even, if I want to be pedantic, I don't know what this a is, although this a appears in the statement of the theorem. This n does not appear in the statement of the theorem, so it's not clear to me what they actually want. I can make guesses. I can say, oh, they're using the fact that a is equal to 2n, but this means that the you start to introduce things where the reader can make guesses as to what you mean, and they might misinterpret what you mean. So rather than let the reader misinterpret you, why don't we just add it for them? So let's include the definition of a is equal to 2n. So we'll start off, we, we include our assumptions, let a be an even number, so a is 2n for some integer n, and we also include the, the conclusion. This is now a complete proof. Let's take some time to reflect. How can you tell if a small bag of stones contains an even number of stones without counting them all? How would you answer the question, is pi even or odd? So imagine you had a student, um, a cousin of yours who was in grade three, and they just learned about even and odd numbers, and they ask you, is pi even or odd? How would you answer them? Can a number be both even and odd at the same time? Why? We'll look at this question a little bit more uh, later on in the course. Thank you very much, and have a good day.